I've been a manager for over 10 years now. I think that's probably the worst summer um, of my career. Um, certainly, we knew that Jurgen was going to be leaving a few weeks before the end of the season. Um, and then, you know, you say to yourself, sit down and uh, go out and replace Jurgen Klinsmann. It's just been made football of the year, scored 29 goals and um, is idolised by everyone at, at the club. Um, how do you replace him? Um, that was a frightening enough uh, proposition in itself. Uh, on top of that, Jika uh, um, had been to see myself and Alan and uh, had a problem handling um, the football uh, in this country, uh, the pace of it. Um, and uh, fly I've caught there, it must be an Arsenal one. Um, <laughs> No, basically, um, he felt that in Europe it was a lot slower and that, could, that would suit him better. So he went to Barcelona. Um, we were working very hard at that time to get Darren Anderson to sign a new contract, um, who was playing in the Umbro Cup at the time, with Teddy and doing very, very well. And then also, uh, Nicky Barnby came to see me with his wife and um, made it clear that, that he basically wanted to move on and go up north. Uh, which at the time was probably the last thing I needed. Um, anyway, we all know the situation now. Uh, Nicky went, Jurgen went, Jika went, and then Darren Anderson got injured for well, a good seven months or more. Um, I brought Chris Armstrong, um, who uh, then proceeded, unfortunately, to be uh, uh, put under an awful lot of pressure by media and everybody else that. Uh, you know, many people had written him off before he'd even kicked a ball. At the same time, we had a terrible run of injuries. Um, Clive Wilson came on a free transfer and then proceeded to get injured the first day. Teddy Sheeran and the same thing pre-season. And we had to go into all these top quality pre-season games with half a team. Um, that then became a crisis every time we lost a game uh, from a press point of view. And um, we went from being a team that had just been top London club and got to the semi-finals uh, to a team that um, hadn't kicked a ball yet in the pre-season uh, and in the summer, but was being, uh, you know, banded about as relegation candidates. So it, it certainly, it was a very, very difficult summer for me, um, and obviously for the players. Um, and we came into the first game, I think, against Manchester City. Um, I think there was at least six players out of the team for that game that had finished the season before. Uh, Colin Corder was suspended as well, uh, as I recall. Um, and no, it wasn't the, the, it wasn't the best of uh, preparations for the season. And the header in! It's a goal for Aston Villa! Here's Mark Wright for Liverpool. Out to Rob Jones. But Manaman. With Nap had uh, started this particular move, and here's Barnes. It's a strong searching run. John Barnes! Oh! That's a brilliant John Barnes effort! And Liverpool take the lead! 
Well, John Barnes has scored some spectacular goals in his Liverpool career. And here's another one. A brilliant finish. 1-0 Liverpool. Fowler. Good turn from Robbie Fowler. Here's John Barnes. John Barnes for Liverpool. 2-0. Two for Barnes and two for Liverpool. Jones again. Now McManaman again. What sort of cross can he get in? Fowler! 3 0. A brilliant finish by Robbie Fowler. What a goal for Liverpool. What a blow for Tottenham. But that was Liverpool at their best. Here comes the corner. Oh, it's in. It's turned in. And Spurs have a goal. Colin Calderwood. Twenty-three minutes gone. It's uh, still been mostly West Ham so far. Well, it's a fairly late challenge. And, uh, the free kick uh, goes West Ham's way. Uh, Don Hutchinson's uh, the man to watch out for here for West Ham. We played uh, twenty-four minutes at the bowling ground. It's a five-man Tottenham, Wally and Walker trying to mastermind the troops. Referee urging the wall to go further back. It's always uh, dangerous situations uh, for a defensive side. Hutchinson uh, looks to be the man. Oh, it's a screamer! And it's 1-0 to West Ham and Don Hutchinson with a brilliant goal. They keep pressing forward, ten minutes gone in the second half. Howells. Here's Rosenthal. That's a good turn. Ronnie Rosenthal makes it 1-1. Started by getting the point that Man City should, should have won there, except for a late goal. Ian's come and, and misjudged the cross, and that, that should have been three points to start with. In fact, that two points would have took us joint fourth, as it turns out now. Just one of the situations. But, but um, uh, you know, we then had the two home games against Villa and Liverpool, a game with a, with a very... Uh, a, a team which was short of a number of players from before. Um, we were, what was it, third from bottom with one point, and people were writing you off. You know, the only way out of it was that I knew, I knew that when I got all my players back, we wouldn't be bad. That was for sure. Uh, but to talk about it is irrelevant. People are not going to worry about whether you've got injuries or whether there's a problem or whether Darren Anderson's out or whether uh, Sol Campbell's out or whoever's out. They're not worried. All they're going to be concerned about is results. So all we had to do was to start winning. And the criticism and the and the, and the uh, media attention and everything else would go away, and that's what we had to do. So I felt it made us a little bit stronger together. Uh, we clubbed together, and um, there's a lot of character in the squad, and there's a lot of uh, never say die attitude. And uh, certainly that was there when I came, and we, we made that even stronger for the first year, and it proved to be very very important in the second year. Uh, trying to urge them on, the lead supporters packed into that corner. Ibarra doing some defending here. Evan uh, is Armstrong, 10 and showing him. David Howes coming up for this one as well. Abbott's uh, in the box as well. It's an outswinger. And here's Howes! <laughs> and they hadn't picked him up. Well, a very good goal for Tottenham. And David Howes, unmarked, gives them the lead. Still Palmer, Yeboa, 1-1, and the Ghanaian strikes, but where was the marking? That's so simple for a striker of his quality. A very poor defensive goal, this one for Tottenham. Rosenthal lost out, this is Carlton Palmer. Here's Wilson. Here's Armstrong. And here's Sheringham. Oh, yes! It's 2 1. And Teddy Sheringham does it from a quality cross from Chris Armstrong. Spurs back in front. And it's Sheringham's goal.
and delight for the Tottenham faithful. Salatin for Sheffield Wednesday. Memories, of course, revived of last season's enthralling opening day encounter here when Spurs edged home by four goals to three and a certain Jurgen Klinsmann was on the score sheet on his debut. This is down Anderton now. Only just wide of goal. Anderton, who of course was sorely missed by Tottenham during his recent absence through injury. Here's Putrescu, now then to Bright. And Pembridge, Mark de Greiser. Oh, and that's an excellent through pass for Ian Nolan. In comes Hurst, and a goal! Eight minutes gone, and Sheffield Wednesday had the lead through David Hurst. De Greiser. Here's Pembridge. Careless, though, straight to Clive Wilson. Anderton. Headed on by Sheringham to Armstrong up the post, but Sheringham is there to sweep it in. 32 minutes gone, and Tottenham are level. That first goal for Tottenham continues to elude Chris Armstrong. He was very unlucky. Sheringham there with the follow-up. Calderwood. This is Anderton. Who certainly has spiced up Tottenham's attacking play. Rosenthal down for Sheringham. Oh, it don't go! Des Walker has put through his own net. The ball appeared to have squirmed away from Sheringham then. But on the hour, it's an own goal from Walker. Anderton. Edinburgh in support. Rosenthal in the middle, away by Putrescu. This is Sheringham. Now Rosenthal. Trying to ride the tackles. They've brought him down. It's a penalty. Referee Dermot Gallagher points to the spot. Walker involved again. I'm not sure whether his tackle was the first one. Or Peter Atherton's. Looks like Atherton first, and then Walker as well. Rosenthal sandwiched between them. Here's Teddy Sheringham, and it's 3-1. Mann. Sheringham. Mann. Oh, there's confusion there. And Ronnie Rosenthal crosses, and Armstrong! Chris Armstrong, the scorer, and Tottenham lead by a goal to nil. Sheringham. McMahon. Oh, great play. Gerald McMahon now. Armstrong's in acres of space. And it might come to him. Chris Armstrong! That's a second. Well, one always knew that when the first came, it wouldn't need too long to a second, and he's got it. McMahon. Anderton makes the run. Now Darren Anderton, first touch is a good one. Now Teddy Sheringham. Oh, so simple, so critical. 3 0, and Teddy Sheringham buried that. Great play from Tottenham. Two minutes and 50 seconds. And Maddock gets up there. Ronnie Rosenthal gets the goal, it's 4-0 in stoppage time. Here's Flick. Here's Sinclair. Dicchio. Impey. Barker's cross, Dicchio! to see if Spurs do make any little uh, adjustments in this second half. Trevor keeping his BDI on the way things pan out. It's Osborne, that's Brevitt's cross. And again, and Impey comes in! And Andrew Impey has scored the second goal for Queen's Park Rangers. It was another cross, this time from the left. Another header, this time from the smaller figure of Impey. 
and all of Jerry Francis's half-time talk cut to ribbons within 26 seconds of the second half starting. He must be gutted. Oh, now that looked a real shove on Teddy Sheringham by Reddy, and the referee has given the penalty. Much to Queen's Park Rangers disgust. If Spurs are to have any chance of coming back into this game, Sheringham must score! He has! Well executed by Sheringham, and Tottenham back in this game with a shout. Karen Anderton, who appears to have a, an ice pack on his thigh, which suggests there was a bit of a strain. And given away by Di Keo, straight to Rosenthal, this is Wilson. Number three, Edinburgh. Wilson. And Dessel turns and scores the equaliser. Jason Dessel completes the comeback for Spurs. 2 0 down, but now those fans are delirious. Their unbeaten record away from home may be preserved yet. Well, I said there were more goals in this game, and certainly there is. Great little turn from Dazelle, good ball in from Wilson. Here you see the ball played into Dazelle. Rebid holds him up, gets a little turn. You can fault Summer for that. He knew exactly what he was doing, Dazelle. Lovely turn. MP. to Sheringham, and now Armstrong's through, can he beat Maddox for once? Trying to conceal it from him, Sheringham, 3-2 to Tottenham, and Jerry Francis is side have turned it round against his old club. Armstrong for once beat Maddox, and Sheringham was there to knock in his seventh goal of the season. Yes, Danny Maddox won't be too pleased with this. He matches Armstrong for pace. But here you see QPR, they get two on one. But Armstrong and Lowe's, with Maddox and Lowe's going to wriggle away. And look at the mark in the middle there. They've got enough players there, QPR, to deal with that. Sheringham's left totally unmarked. He's just not going to miss chances like that. Armstrong, this is Sheringham. Sheringham leaves it. Armstrong, great chance. Second deflection, Sheringham. Teddy Sheringham there getting the goal. It was uh, all endeavour, heart, and another headed finish. And Wimbledon's defensive problems continue. Seven minutes gone, Sheringham's goal, and Spurs can now settle down and relax. Well worth the replay. We got it up for you nice and quickly. Armstrong with a deflection. Sheringham with the header. Here's Armstrong, kept it in. Now, Sheringham's in the centre, Chris Armstrong goes up his own, and here's Sheringham on the back of the goal, the back of the goal for Sheringham. Here's Sheringham, he's waiting, he's scored. Well, he took his time, but didn't he do it well in the end? Two for Tottenham, and two for Sheringham.
the replay. Chris Armstrong was so strong here. And he put it across the face of the goal. I thought it was going to be an own goal then. Then Sheringham, he had the ball here, surely. Kept his nerve, kept his composure. Not once, not twice. The third time, and he buried it. So Jones. Little flick header. Oh, it's hit the bar and must be in. And is. So Wimbledon get a goal back. And Robbie Earl gets the goal. Sheringham, here's our strong. He's got the goal. That's his first Premiership goal. That's a relief for him. And it was the combination that did it. And Chris Armstrong, absolutely delighted by that. Spurs, we won up. At the moment, I must admit, you know, my fitness probably ain't what it's supposed to be because obviously I haven't played for as long as three weeks now. But hopefully. Um, you know, if selected and I start from the beginning, I'll, I'll just try my hard until perhaps my legs give away on me, then he'll have to take me off or carry me off, I think. Uh, Foxy was somebody I was looking for for a while and we had to play on with, with the Barnby uh, money, but but uh, wasn't able to get who I wanted. And, and Foxy came in and did very, very well. I mean, I think he was probably, for the home game, was instrumental in winning that for us against Arsenal. He was magnificent. And he can be a match winner on his own. Uh, and certainly he had, he had a fair, fair season with us. I mean, he became our third leading goal scorer with six, which was, obviously wasn't hard behind Teddy and uh, Chris that got the, the bulk of the, the goals and had an excellent season. But certainly, you know, he can score goals and he can make things happen and he can certainly open up defences. Um, just maybe over a base, maybe a little bit more consistent, I think, over a season. But certainly for the first few months, he was excellent and uh, an exciting player to have in your side and certainly make a lot of chances for Teddy and Chris. Go Steve Stone, great effort, oh that's Steve Stone at his absolute best, a brilliant goal from Stone. It was a bit of a fluke goal against us, but we just got to dig in now, we went you know, six, six games without losing, so I think we just got to get back on that same road. And you played in three positions in the first game? Yeah, that's how I play. I mean, you got to get you better get used to me because that's how I'm going to play. You know, if I don't touch the ball within five minutes, then I'm going to go looking for it. You know, whether it be left back, right back. You know, I, I just like to try and keep it a game. Well directed kick that Sheringham loses out in there. He's got a tough opponent in Watson. They don't come much tougher than Kanchelskis to Samways. Kanchelskis wants it back. There are three blue shirts waiting for this cross. Stewart's there. Oh, lovely goal. Stewart, the scorer, but the first man he thanks is Andre Kamchelskis, who provided a classic cross. Calls to Stewart. Is it down to Samways? The pace just evaded him. Now Wilson looking for the run of Armstrong again. He's behind the Everton defence. Can he finish this one? Oh, he can. That was a nice way to get off the mark in the Premiership for Spurs. His old confidence will be oozing back now. He's had a tough time as a Spurs player, Chris Armstrong, but that's what they've paid so much money for. That was the finish of a four and a half million pound man. Showed the pace, showed the cool head. And showed the goal celebration. Chris Armstrong brings Spurs back into it. Mark. Up towards Sheringham and Armstrong. But away comes Gordon Strachan. With love. Up to Strachan again. He had such an influence on the game on Saturday. It's a great cross in, too. Maybe a chance here. The shot charged down. As Lapti came in. Off goes Armstrong, he's got the better of Williams. With that neat little change of pace, Sheringham's up with him, still Armstrong! 
And this time he has scored. Less than two minutes gone. Well, as ever, Ron Atkinson was optimistic beforehand, but it's all going wrong at the moment, thanks to this early flourish from Tottenham. And the goal for the man on the ball now, Chris Armstrong. Dangerous ball into Sheringham, and there's a second one. The combination that has been so promising for Tottenham this season has proved decisive again. Who's all around Michael Rowe from the Cockney fans? There's Hall with a cross in this time. Another appeal for a penalty, and this time it has been given. Coventry have a penalty. Good love. Peter and Love will take the penalty kick. For Coventry City. A real opportunity for him to bring his team back into the game. And he has. The goal ten minutes into the second half. And now at last we have a cup tie. Lapti. The linesman is flagging, it'll be a free kick to Coventry. They're going to be strapped now, of course, on these set pieces. He's now shouting from the sidelines. Boost is up from the back, and Williams as well. And it's gone in! An equaliser! David Boost. I think he's going to claim it. Head off on my left tee. that's Boost, and there's the header from Dublin, Salako! 3-2, Coventry! Um, I felt we had a good chance of winning the League Cup, personally. We got through a round, there have been a lot of, a lot of top first uh, pre premiership sides knocked out. Um, we went to Coventry, and at half-time we turned it up and we played ever so well. Very, very well. Two, it could have been three or four. And... Um, it all hinged really on, on a situation with Dean Austin when, 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 when basically um, he was off injured and needed stitches in the head wound and um, he'd gone to the room and it was locked. And um, it took, I'm waiting for him to come back, like I said, every five minutes to be back and it took ages, it took 10, 10, 12 minutes, 14 minutes and by that time they'd be given a penalty. And uh, the penalty changed the game. Certainly from that point of view, I mean, OK, you've got to handle those situations. Ten men, whatever, you've got to handle that situation. You've got to learn to handle the pressure. And we didn't for that 15, 20 minutes. And, and we find ourselves like, 20 minutes free, two down. Stormed back. Very unfortunate to get an equaliser. But I was very, very disappointed with that because I felt we could have gone on and, and, and done really well in that competition. It is Armstrong, Tottenham feeling agreed. Get that out of their system if they can strike here. Beresford not far enough away. Dezel sharing it. Austin with an early cross. Towards the, the shorter man got the better of Dezel. Austin forward again. Armstrong's in. They have scored. They can forget about the penalty claims now. I think justice has seen to be served there. I thought it was a penalty. Chris Armstrong was a one deny. But he wasn't to be denied there. It's a wonderful floated crossing. Really teasing, really tempting for a striker. Not a great ball out there. That's sloppy from Sellers. Straight back in, in between players. His slot is a little bit in no man's land, the edge of the six yard box. And it's a great header. He's got to get it up if he's going to score. And over a six foot plus goalkeeper. And he does just that. Howells. Sharing it. Turned well, took the shot well! Well, that would have been a sensational goal. They say he's not quick, Teddy Sheringham, and to some extent that is true. But he's got such a quick mind. Well, it's the way he turns, and he's made up his mind by now that he's hitting this. And he hits it so well, I mean, that's got his lock beaten all over the place. Beresford. across to Ginola, and he takes them on, Austin and Fox, and he's got the better of both of them, a real chance for Newcastle, and the Frenchman here, 1-1. All the own work of David Ginola, 
And I've caught him a furious. Teddy Sheringham, David Howells, absolutely furious with the referee because they feel that Dean Austin was impeded by David Ginella before they went forward and smashed it in. This is the important part. The dodgy foul, Dean Austin. Austin's in front of him. First goal for the new well, I don't know, I think it may be 6 or 1. Did he catch him? It's a difficult decision. But they were absolutely furious. The one thing we do know. Yeah, it's a difficult one. The referee made his mind up. But from there, Ginella smashes it past Walker. It's the pace that beats the goalkeeper. Fox. Sheringham! Great stop by his left. Well, that's as good a piece of football as you like to see. I said that Beers' pass would take some beating. Dean Austin's just produced one there. It came very, very close. Well, I could have let it run. I don't know what sort of call he was getting. I'll tell you what call he got, none. Fox takes it. Rosenthal. And ball again. given Spurs players chase after Martin Bodnam Sellers Beardsley that's the bed of Austin there's no offside Ferdinand and it's blocked on the line and Les Ferdinand surely now knows that it's not going to be his day Merson wants it back, Merson gets it back, early ball for Bergkamp, brilliant play from Arsenal, absolutely brilliant goal, the signs were there, they were putting their passes together, but they hadn't really looked like penetrating, they have done now after 14 minutes, and Tottenham ripped apart here. Often Arsenal known for their tenacity rather than their technique. But this was stunning play. A superb finish. And Dennis Bergkamp, the boyhood Spurs fan, makes the current Spurs fans uh, disheartened here. It's Tottenham nil, Arsenal one. Three up for Tottenham. Arsenal have three, now four back. Fox. It's gone in from Teddy Sheringham. Despite the efforts of Adams, despite the efforts of Seaman. And Spurs have struck back after 29 minutes. Seconds after they were defending an Arsenal corner. But Fox got his cross in. And Sheringham stooping there. It looked for a second as though Seaman had saved it. But he hadn't. In towards Sheringham again. 
Well read by Adams. Ooh, Winterburn took a risk with the pass into that area. And the pass was a fine one as it turned out. Arsenal haven't been able to recapture, really, the uh, rhythm that they showed in the opening 20 minutes of the game. Armstrong, Chris Armstrong for Tottenham. Tottenham have taken the lead. A magnificent piece of play from the scorer. In the 10th minute of the second half. A match that started badly for Spurs. It has a much rosier hue to it now. He picked his way round Steve Bold, did Chris Armstrong, and fired it into the corner. That was Gazelle of the game suiting Spurs you sense at the moment they're drawing Arsenal forward and making opportunities on the break Fox oh Seaman slipped on oh, recovered somehow when Sheringham came diving in Seaman stuck out of foot having lost his footing a moment earlier down he went up he got and it stays at 2-1, and Sheringham is denied again. It was, a, it was a great day. I'll always remember that day. Um, the atmosphere, the, the crowd before the game. There was a lot of tension in the air. It was like no other game I played in. Yeah, um, it was a bit scrappy, and that was a, it was a good game, people said, for North London derbies. But, you know, obviously I was just delighted to score the winner. It was a great result. I mean, it is just another game to us. We know, we know that it means a lot to the uh, Tottenham and Arsenal supporters, but... Um, to us, it's, it's just another game, and it's three points there to be won. But um, once it's once it is won, it's it's very nice to uh, have one over them. Since I came to the club, people and I wasn't scoring. People would tell me we don't care if you don't score a season. Just make sure you score the winner against Arsenal. So I realised what it meant to the fans, and you know I was pleased to have got it. This is Armstrong. Great run here by Armstrong. He's through here. Oh, and he's pulled it wide. Fox is arriving inside the penalty area, but once again, Armstrong really has threatened down the left-hand side, and it's been a real problem for Middlesbrough to keep an eye on him. And that's a terrific turn by Rosenthal, he's through here, oh dear! Rosenthal is proving to be a real nuisance. That was a terrific turn. And did Gary Walsh get a touch on that one? I suspect he did. It's going to be a corner kick to Tottenham. Once again arousing themselves as they try to find the opening goal in this game. And Rule Fox will take the corner. Well, the goalkeeper's fumbled that one. The whistle has gone before Calderwood. Managed to help the ball towards goal. It was a foul on the keeper, and it's a free kick to Middlesbrough. Fouls by Rosenthal on Gary Walsh. Oh, it's given away now to Rule Fox. Has Armstrong up in support. This is Fox. Armstrong through. Is he going to score? He has done, and Tottenham have the lead. Well, Fox took an eternity to sweep the ball on to Chris Armstrong. And in the end, Armstrong virtually walked the ball into an unguarded net. Well, Fox was the architect of the goal. And whilst Middlesbrough appealed for the offside flag, Chris Armstrong did the right thing. Terrific ball in by Rule Fox, and Armstrong must have timed his run to perfection here to score a real poacher's goal. The match attracted Chelsea's biggest gate of the season, just over 31,000. The home side went into the match unbeaten by Tottenham in their last 10 meetings and almost scored after nine minutes. Mark Hughes showed his determination. Dennis Wise with a first-time pass into the path of Eddie Newton, but his shot from just inside the penalty area hit the crossbar and went over. Newton had hit Chelsea's winner in their midweek victory over Bolton and should perhaps at least have forced Ian Walker into making a save. 
The busiest keeper, though, was at the other end. Rule Fox was a constant threat as Tottenham created the better scoring chances. Dimitri Karin had already made good saves from Ronnie Rosenthal and Chris Armstrong when after Fox's brilliant run, Karin again kept out Armstrong. Karin's contribution particularly admired by Harding. The pace of the game slackened in the second half. Chelsea thought they'd snatched a winner two minutes from time, but Paul Furlong, who'd replaced Mark Steen in the starting lineup, saw his effort disallowed for a push on Jason Dazelle. It finished nil-nil. Fox. Austin again. Lovely touch by Fox. Austin's got space now. Sheringham. Great play by Tottenham. Fox again. What a move! And what a fantastic effort! The trick for the crossbar. The best move that Spurs have had all season for me. And the crowd are giving him a standing ovation. Sackle saved it, you've got to give him credit. And when it comes back, well, it was brilliantly struck. Ronnie Rosenthal and Neville Southall, I'm sure, got a touch. Amakachi, great run. Still Amakachi. Oh, that was good defending on his own post by Dean Austin. Armstrong, Sheringham, Fox, great play, now there's a chance, off his point, that's a corner, he took a deflection, David Howes, well I think that was going in, if you have a look at it closely, and uh, we will give you a replay of this one, and here, who did it get deflected? Oh, that was going in. Southall was beaten. Sheringham. Here's Fox. Now the cross comes in. Sheringham! Good save. Well, Teddy Sheringham headed it into the ground, which is exactly what he wanted to do. Well, here was Fox's cross. It was a beauty. Look at that. Perfect header from Sheringham, and that is a tremendous save. Now there's a chance, Chris Armstrong's in here, and has he done it? No, he didn't hit it hard enough. Off the line by Matthew Jackson. Never flick on, here's Rule Fox. Now the space inside, Sheringham goes to one area. Great chance for Tottenham, Sheringham must be! And Spurs take the lead, and the man who's got this tremendous record against Queen's Park Rangers does it again. And Tottenham lead thanks to Teddy Sheringham. Well, it was almost inevitable that if Spurs were to score, it would come from Sheringham. Fox's cross. And Rosenthal shots. And Sheringham, he doesn't miss those. Free kick. Sheringham or Rosenthal. Ronnie Rosenthal drives it. Oh, it's in the ball. Well, he's hit the same crossbar as he did last week. This time it's in the second half, not the first half. Rocket Ronnie with the closest we've come to a goal in his second half so far. And well worth another look from this pitch side angle. Oh, he hit the crossbar. It looked a certain goal from the moment he struck it. Good spell for Spurs here. This is Chris Armstrong. And Sheringham making a powerful run in the centre. And here is Sheringham. That's a super save for Sheringham again. The chance has gone for Tottenham. Well, it was Chris Armstrong's cross, and it was a brilliant header from Sheringham. That looked a goal all the way. All credit to the keeper, who made a fine save. Been teasing the Wimbledon defence all afternoon here. And still Fox. This is a great run. Not a bad cross. The header from Rosenthal. Oh, Ronnie Rosenthal there. Have had a few chances, and here's another one. And Walker goes down to block it, and there's another chance here. Holdsworth, and still Holdsworth, and it's a real scramble. Holdsworth again! That's only inches wide. Colin Cornwall will have it covered. 
But more danger here, and Walker blocking it superbly. And in the end, you've got to give all credit to Colin Caldwell, who had it covered as Walker makes a great save. Dean Holdsworth again coming in and having a final effort that took a deflection. And Caldwell there doing good defending for Tottenham. Armstrong. Oh, that's Sheringham. Fox! Yes! Spurs have done it! They've got the winner! Five minutes of time! Breaking the record for the, for the minutes for a clean sheet was, uh, was, was nice, because uh, we came close to it the year before. And then uh, to beat, it, uh, and beat Ray Clements' record was uh, something special, so yeah, that was nice but hopefully there'll be uh, even more special things to come. And that record is two minutes over ten hours without picking the ball from his net. A sequence broken by Scott Green of Bolton Wanderers. But with his sense of humour and commitment to his profession, there'll be more honours for Ian Walker. Now there's a chance, Armstrong's in! And Chris Armstrong now, it must be, hits the post! And Brannigan's still down. The Walton keeper's in trouble now. And the ball must go in. Oh, he's got up miraculously. I'm not quite sure how he saved that. Honestly, I don't know how he saved that. He was in big trouble. And now he's in even bigger trouble. Well, here was the initial save. He went down and it broke to Ronnie Rosenthal, who hit the post. Now, Brannigan's still down. That was the major point there. Now, watch it. He's still down. He hasn't moved. But he suddenly gets some inspiration. Here's the shot. There's an open goal waiting for Wilson. Look at Brannigan now. He's getting back. He's odds against. How's he got there? And still not slid into the goal. If you run it on, he crashes into the net. Clearance into corner. Incessant pressure in that first half spell, but not managed to get it away. And the linesman couldn't help the referee. He looked towards the linesman. It's Mr. Crick from Surrey. Here's the corner. Oh, the header off the line, and oh, surely in! Sheringham scores it. Teddy Sheringham gets the goal. Or Stuart Nedicott, take your pick. For me, Teddy Sheringham gets the final touch. The slow mo will tell us. But let's see it. Nedicott's header. Brannigan saved it, and yes, from Teddy Sheringham. Armstrong. Oh, yes! That is a direct way to finish from Chris Armstrong. What a goal! Walker with the clearance. That's what we call an assist. One bounce. And Armstrong over. And the goal time, 70 minutes, 50 seconds. So Chich. Mistake there, now an opportunity for Bolton. Great chance, and they pull one back. Well... Green gets the goal and he just continued going and still Scott Green Wait, McGinley great run McGinley again no free kick well suddenly Tottenham thought they'd done enough to have won this match and now Bolton Search it, great run, McKinley must be 2-2! Two, two. 
And what a sucker punch! And Bolton has suddenly turned this game completely around. So after 10 hours without conceding a goal, it's the Premiership Bottom Club that scores twice and takes a share of the spoils. In a match that offered little, it wasn't until the second half that Southampton threatened. Fortunately, this cross evaded everyone, forwards and defenders alike. Five minutes from time, the best chance fell to Tottenham. Rocket Ronnie combined with Sol Campbell, who put Teddy in. His shot cannoned off the legs of Dave Besant. Sol up with the attack, and the rebound from Teddy's shot just didn't break for Chris Armstrong. Half an hour gone and uh, Blackman have taken the corner short. 30 minutes gone and having been pegged back for most of the game, Blackburn have taken the lead. Here's Behenan. This is uh, Jeff Kenner. Got Tottenham squeezed a bit here. Shearer. Good strike! Oh, he's done it! What a goal! Sheringham. Gets it back, Sheringham. Here's Armstrong. Chance here for Tottenham. Goes for the shot. And finally it's behind for a corner, but somewhere in the middle of all that, there was a good save by Tim Flowers. One that he made with intent, and I think the ball hit him a second time when he probably didn't know too much about it. But the net result is Tottenham haven't pulled one back, they've just got a corner. A little wink by Flowers to acknowledge his good fortune. And Dumitrescu will take the corner. Never caught! Oh, he's in the post! Well, he's claiming that it was behind the line, but the referee's happy to let play continue. And he could hardly have met that with more force. Here's Armstrong. And now Rosenthal, I wonder how much the switch of the two wide men, Rosenthal and Dumitrescu, has had to do with the change in the shape of the game. Sheringham! Oh, super strike! And it's a goal that Tottenham have been threatening right from the start of the second half. And suddenly this game is back on the boil. And that was a fabulous goal by Sheringham. So the two England men, Shearer in the first half, and now Teddy Sheringham in the second showing just what they can do. When you consider I've had, what, eight players out today. I've had four of my midfield players out today. Uh, you know, Darren Anderson, Jason Dizel, um, Rule Fox, Clive Wilson, you know, uh, David Howes. It's, uh, it's been a tremendous performance, but uh, at the end of the day, we come away with nothing. And after time to reflect and a day on the training ground, Jerry spoke about the heavy Christmas schedule. Well, I thought the Bolton game we played particularly well, but he should have won by about five or six uh, on chances alone. Um, and it was a major disappointment to be turning about the 14 minutes to go. Um, <coughs> and you, you've also got to bear in mind that uh, in six games we've only let two goals in, and five of those have been clean sheets. Uh, and with a record like that, you wouldn't have expected us to let in two goals against a team at uh, bottom of the league in the last 14 minutes, but that's football. Sometimes it happens. First one, we made an individual mistake. And second one, we was, uh, you know, in the space of two or three minutes, it was 2-2. Two -two. That was two points dropped. Southampton game was a tough game on a, on a very difficult pitch. Uh, half of it was uh, completely ice and the other half was OK. A um, couple of days after playing against Bolton, and it's, it's really hard work, you know. We're playing virtually a game every other day now. Four games in nine days, which uh, you can see the conditions today is uh, very difficult for players, I think, uh, to keep up the same sort of standards that you'd like to do. Um, but... Uh, you know, uh, we were uh, unbeaten in uh, September, we lost one in October, we are unbeaten in November, and we are unbeaten in December. So, uh, I mean, it's absolutely magnificent performance by the players. I mean, we've lost one in 17. Right beginning by 
by Tottenham. Carry on! Well, they're claiming another corner. Well, it's the first time that Prune's been asked to defend, and he's found once in here. Sheringham beats him easily in the air. He's looking to escape. It's the header from Sheringham, it's the base of the post. It's another bad uh, delivery from Schmeichel. And straight to Rosenthal. Armstrong! Well, that's twice Tottenham has struck the frame of Schmeichel's goal. We've had just over ten minutes. Well, this is a fantastic effort here from Armstrong. Very little back lift. I think Schmeichel actually leaves it. He's completely, be completely beaten. He hits it with tremendous power and accuracy. sees possession and scores, looks at the linesman, great control. Now you see there's a little luck to the linesman. But he's OK, great finish. He actually gets it stuck underneath him, but he digs it out. Schmeichel flat-footed, can't move. Well, Sheringham is 17 in all this season, 14 of them in the Premiership. They say he's playing the best football of his career, and I don't think too many who watch Tottenham regularly would doubt that. But here's Phil Neville round the back, and Andy Cole has equalised straight away. Another Cole goal. He scores for the fourth match in a row, and just what Alec Ferguson would have ordered. Well, Andy Cole will get all the credit, but just look at the run from uh, Neville, the left-back. Great little one-two with Butt. There's Cole. Easy finish for him. Fourth goal in four consecutive games. He's as hot as Sheridan. Good play from him. Sheringham. Campbell! Tottenham are back in front. Steered in by Sol Campbell. Great goal that from Campbell. Good work from Austin. Gets the ball in. Sheringham's in there again. I think it's his header that comes back to... Campbell on the volley, Schmeichel no chance. Kasky. Rosenthal, it's 3-1, Chris Armstrong. Well, they were queuing up for Tottenham there. And the two-goal cushion that Jerry Francis would have thought, well, would possibly... Never materialised with a below-strength team tonight. Well, they've got it, and Armstrong is the man responsible. Parker, Keane will get there first. And Walker had to be strong to stop that getting past him. Excellent run from Keane. Good, powerful shot at the near post. Walker was in exactly the right position to cover it. Beckham with a corner. Well, circumstances conspiring against Manchester United defensively. They're now looking for inspiration to the attacking side of their play.
the Tottenham penalty area. Here's the chance, comes back out to Cantona, off the line from Rosenthal. Great save. Sheringham. And come back his way again. That's Armstrong. He's got another one. It is 4-1 to Tottenham. And what about Jerry Francis's feelings here? Can scarcely believe it. Yet another cross, yet another goal. Lovely ball from Sheringham. Well-directed header from Armstrong. Fourth goal for Spurs, scored by number 11, Chris Armstrong. The best thing Mr Aspie could do now is to blow that final whistle and put the Manchester United players out of their misery. He's done it. It's a triumph for Tottenham. Another 4-1 win for a team managed by Jerry Francis over Manchester United on New Year's Day as it was with Queen's Park Rangers four years ago. You know, it's, it's, it's important though that beating Manchester United or beating Liverpool or beating Newcastle, which we've done since I've been here, is it, not the be-all and end-all. It, it, it's, it's, it's just three points. And uh, the difference is you've got to have a situation. I could beat in the league leaders one week, 3-1, 4-1 and then losing to the bottom of the table 1-0. Um, that's consistency, that's what wins you things, that's what gives you a chance to win championships. And that's what Manchester United have in abundance. You know, can't always play well. On their day they can play really well, on our day we can play really well. If you're playing a team like Manchester United or Newcastle, it's open game, you can play magnificent football, fantastic game, and the best team wins. Another day you play teams that are uh, out there to stop you playing, and they're out there to, to look after your better players. And so what do you do? What do you say? You say, well, it's not our day today, you know, um, they're not allowing us to play. Oh, never mind, we're, we're trying to win the next game, we lost this one. You have to roll your sleeves up, you have to be tenacious, and you have to go out there and, and, and win the game. And Tottenham trying to surge forward. Little chance now for Sheringham. Oh, and it's in! And it's Ronnie Rosenthal! Spurs take the lead, and a miscued shot headed in by Ronnie Rosenthal. Hereford have been pumping forward, and again they're uh, moving forward again. This is Pounder. Oh, that's a fair challenge. No, it's not. It's a penalty. Ronnie Rosenthal on Tony Pounder. So Dean Smith. Over, and well over, it remains 1-0 to Tottenham. Corner from Downing, Bruff, 1-1, they've got the equaliser, and it's going to be an agonising few minutes now for Tottenham, we're all square. It finished in a draw, and that may have been fair. What was not fair was the bombshell from UEFA. Tottenham were given a year's ban from European competition should they qualify in any of the next five seasons. Chairman Mr Alan Sugar made a pledge to the Spurs fans via the Jumbotron. The entry of the Intertoto Cup for England this year was a bit of a misunderstanding also, and uh, it got to a last-minute panic where certain clubs had to go forward and play. So, effectively, we've uh, had to do the FA and the Premier League a favour. We spoke to them yesterday, they're going to give us 100% backing. I spoke to a lot of Premier League club chairmen this morning, they're all going to give us the backing. When all the paperwork's put in front of the UA for people in a couple of weeks' time, it's all going to go away, I'm absolutely convinced of it. So, really, you know, on the Richter scale of 10, you know, I'll give it, I'll give it one, really. From coming in, six points deducted, out of the FA Cup, no money, to, to putting all that right and getting things back and having a good season, then losing Klinsman, Barnby, Popescu, Darren Anton getting injured and hanging in there and you're still in a good place, you're in the top three, magnificent there to, to do that with, with a lot of the players out. All of a sudden they say, now you're out of Europe, you know, and you're chucked out of Europe. It's, it's certainly not a dull place here, you know, and uh, it, was a, it was a major worry because it, it, it looked as if they were very, very serious and it was for three years, um, you know, which, which was... Which was heart rendering for the players really I mean they've worked so hard and all of a sudden now don't matter what they do they weren't going to be allowed in and knowing the circumstances as I did knowing the situation as I did because I was instrumental in making sure we had things in writing from the Premier League etc about this situation um, when it was talked of in the first place 
I couldn't see how they could possibly do it. But certainly we had to go a number of games with that over our head. Uh, and it, it didn't help. It certainly didn't help. Claude Littner, our uh, chief executive here, spoke to UEFA long before the tournament. He wrote them a fax confirming his telephone conversation. Even a man there agreed that we could do what we did. It's just that internally there, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. And we'll just show them all the paperwork and it'll all be over. Mr Sugar led the Tottenham Hotspur appeal, which was successful. And the punishment was changed to a fine, which was shared by all the Premiership clubs. right of him he's got to uh, try and use that area himself coming infield though with Kasky Sheringham great stop it was a very powerful header just fortunately for Iker Immel to take nothing away from the goalkeeper's reactions it came at a good height for him but it was bulleting towards the back of the net until the German goalkeeper got to it from Teddy Sheringham. Campbell, Edinburgh. Armstrong! Well, they've had to wait a long time. 20 minutes into the second half. Jerry Francis leads the applause. Manchester City who defended with a fair amount of composure but the cross from Campbell and the desire of Chris Armstrong to get there first. That's a fair turn. Oh! Space for Kasky, might try one. Plays it inside, Armstrong! Oh, and it's so effective. It's four for Tottenham and two apiece for Sheringham and Armstrong. Sheringham. Now Armstrong's got an easier chance. Sheringham! Chris Armstrong have dominated, and Sheringham has three, and Spurs have five. It's the last minute. It's a fair effort. Oh, what a goal! A personal moment of real triumph for Karen Stoker. Any understanding takes time, and. Uh... Chris coming to a new club, big club for a, for a big signing, signing on fee, was um, it was always going to be difficult, and um, you have to learn to adapt to people, and uh, he's doing that, and we're doing that as well with him. Yeah, it did take uh, time to adjust. I think I probably thought it was going to be easier than what it was. Coming to a club with better players, a bigger club, I thought it'd be quite easy to fit in, but these things do take time. And uh, playing with Ted, I hadn't played with him during pre-season, so the more games I played with him and the rest of the team, the the more you know, seems to fit in. If you take his first six months alongside some of the great players that have been at Tottenham, like uh, Darren Anderton, Paul Gascoigne, um, Chris Waddle, they was all they all had a six-month settling in period. And uh, Chris has got 13 goals to his credit, and um, that's that's no mean feat, really. The way we play sort of uh, probably suits each other. Um, with Ted holding it up and uh, me making me runs down the right and trying to. Uh, put balls in for him. Um, yeah, it has. It's just, I think it's just 
lucky enough it's just worked out. by Mabbott, Bull looking to use Goodman's acceleration and still Goodman might get in! Don Goodman for Wolverhampton Wanderers Austin and Walker look at each other Armstrong in the middle, oh wonderful save by David James and sportingly Armstrong there is the first to congratulate him such athleticism from the goalkeeper Sinton doing well to pull it back. And the header seemed to be arrowing into the corner before that magnificent stop by David James. Tottenham trying to flick it off. Mabbott's down in firm. Tottenham will look to counter-attack here. They've got bags of pace. Fox for Rosenthal. And Tottenham have swept upfield from a Wolves corner, remember. Wonderful. Ronnie game. Rosenthal has given them the lead. <laughs> well, it's a good start for Jerry Francis. Uh, his players are quite frustrated that they got so close to the final last season. And, uh, I think they needed to point it out too much by their manager that this is a very big night for their ambition and his ambition. Oh, and they might get another one here. They have from Sheringham. And uh, Thompson hangs his head. His mistake, and it's Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Tottenham Hotspur two. Williamson's corner. Dix! Point blank range, and it's knocked in by Donny! First appearance in the starting lineup, and Donny, the Portuguese player on loan, has set the West Ham fans off in jubilation. Our cup trip to Forest was cut short by Arctic conditions. Austin. Well, it was Steve Jettle who was discomforted. The Spurs players looking like snowmen in their white. Will Fox into the he's taking them off, Matt. The he's taking them off. The referee's taking them off. Hyde wants to chase Armstrong onside. Slowed up. Still Armstrong. He knows what he's doing. And he's Chris Armstrong opens the scoring, and that was striking at its best. Sheer confidence, and wasn't it rewarding with a great finish? Two in the centre. 
And a great chance here for Wednesday, well blocked. Colin Calderwood now doing so well. Corner to Sheffield Wednesday. It's actually a throw. Chris Woods. And the drive comes in, good save from Walker. Dropped off deep, they managed to get the ball to him. I just think he's got great balance, great feet. Tricks Gary Mabbitt just by coming back inside him. Right in the wall. What Tottenham do, they don't put a man behind him. So Gemmel steps out, but it does take something for someone to drill it into that little gap. Warren was able to do that. Cooper. Flattens Cheringham, Gary Willard is calling. Colin Cooper across. Armstrong! Quick reply from Tottenham. Well, that's just a trick. Cherryham's looked like he fancies it in the air tonight. He's already won one head at about two minutes early and it flicked on through. And I noticed he had a word with Calderwood. As if to say, just hang it up there. I can win it. He does just that. He's not looking to score. He's looking to put it across the six yard box. But there'll be some questions asked. Look at Chris Armstrong. Look at the space he has. Look at the time he has to pick his spot and drop it lovely in the corner. That's not good marking at all from Forrest. But that's a good header from Chris Armstrong. Well, the potent pairing up front for Spurs in perfect harmony there. Certainly been a match full of good football, but there's been a physical edge to it as well. To this point. Just running repairs for Cooper. Well, his 99th birthday, incidentally. We've got good competition in that physical edge, Matt. There's nothing sinister going on in the game at all. The people have been competitive. Rosenthal. Sol Campbell, good position this for Tottenham. And it comes for Armstrong who can place it into the corner. Crossley couldn't claim it, and Chris Armstrong has got his second goal with 27 minutes gone. Tottenham have really turned it around. Well, Ian Warren turns and watches the ball here. Now you watch it, he's placing the ball. Look, Campbell's gone behind him. And he does well from here. Crossley reaches for it, doesn't get it. Edge of his fingertips, can't pull it towards him. But it all started because Campbell made a lovely run behind Warren. The keeper can't control it. Well, that's a simple task for Chris Armstrong. Won't get many easier cut goals than that. That's Armstrong's header, and Fox is away. There's no one really keeping pace with him in the centre, although Armstrong's got there now! Well, he's hit the net for the third time, but... On this occasion, it was the wrong side of it. I bet you if that had come from the other side, Mark, they'd have controlled it with his instep on his right foot and slotted it. To give him credit for Look winning the, the header made up. and then making up the ground. But I just thought here, he wants to take it with his right foot. As Fox fizzes it across. Now watch this. Control it with the left and hit it with the left. He controls it with the right and hits it with the right. And that was awkward. Made the angle awkward. I think someone with more confidence on his left side would have cushioned it with the left and driven it across the goalkeeper. Well, with the left foot as well, he'd probably have 35 goals at this point of the season. It would have cost about £19 million. Pounds. <laughs> Gavin for Stoke. Takes it early. Oh, Ian Walker from Campbell. And then as Brian Roy looked to finish it off, keeps Tottenham in front. Just. What a great save from Walker. Double save. Tottenham, as we've been saying, not so convincing in the second half. That's as close as Forrest have come, though. Little. Walker not required this time, but... 
This was terrific goalkeeping. Well, it's one of the best moves we've put together. Because he's got a bit of movement, Gemmel's run. It's a good ball in. Campbell does everything you would expect. Because he can only just turn and direct it towards goal. It's a little behind him. But he does really well. Goalkeeper's brilliant save, but look at that for reaction. Ryan Roy thinks he's got a simple tap in. Well, he didn't have. Super reactions from Ian Walker for both saves. Wiggles pass, Wilson. And uh, Rosenthal was the culprit. And Gary Willard is reaching for the car. The yellow one. Again, he gives a bit of width, Steve Stone, and they really look threatening. Now, would he chance it? Would he watch tremendous free kicks? Spurs had a uh, fitness test this morning for Teddy Sheringham and Gary Mabbott and Ian Walker. As uh, Jerry Francis was forced to just make the one change with Chris Armstrong hobbling out of the action. Now there's a charge. This is a good opportunity for Slay! He's hit the post on his Tottenham debut. This was a tremendous through ball and Slade, first touch was a good one, second was fairly good as well. Well, Sol Campbell to Stephen Slade. And hits the post. It's a fair looking cross. Oh, Dazelle's in there! And Spurs lead with Jason Dazelle getting the goal. Well, a cross from Andy Sinton may have taken a slight deflection, but there was no mistaking it. Jason Dazelle. And Tottenham have the lead. Well, the cross was a good one, and Dazelle got there. First goal for Spurs, by number 12, Jason Gazelle. And the goal time, 63 minutes, 17 seconds. It's halfway, little flick on, this is Armstrong. Sheringham was coming across. This is Ian Wong. No flag, Brian Roy is onside, and he's overdone it, or has he? No, brilliant! Brian Roy opens the scoring for Nottingham Forest. The first touch thoughtfully and let him down. The second was brilliant and he showed great pace. And Forest Lee. A fabulous finish by Brian Roy. He was definitely onside. I thought he'd overdone it with the first touch. But the second gives Nottingham Forest the lead. But Williams took it straight into Brian Roy. This is Wome. But Williams. Gemmel. Oh, just wide. What an excellent effort from Gemmel. A flying shot from behind the goal. Struck it cleanly. Oh, it was drifting fast Walker. Campbell. And this is uh, Sol Campbell. Oh, he beat Ian Wome there comfortably and uh, Brian Roy as well. And Tottenham having a, quite a good spell at this stage. Only a half clearance. Wilson. And that's a free kick, surely. Harlan didn't like it. Right in the centre. Ian Womu destroyed uh, Tottenham in the first uh, match, the second game after the uh, abandon. And I wonder if Teddy Sheringham can gain some form of revenge. It looks like he's setting himself up for this one. Mostly, so his view of it as well. What a time it would be if uh, Spurs could uh, get back in the wall. Four Forest players and two from Tottenham.
It is Sheringham. It's one more. White Hart Lane, Iran, and we're all square at 1-1. And the goal time, 32 minutes, 11 seconds. Loads him into the penalty area. him gets up. Oh, it's driven wide! By Gary Mabbott. What a story that would have been on his 600th appearance. Well, it came across and Mabbott... He struck it fairly cleanly, just wide. Phillips. And now away from Nottingham Forest, McGregor Roy's in the centre. McGregor, great save from Walker. Well, that was a real opportunity for Nottingham Forest. Well, the talk now would be. Who is going to take the penalties for Tottenham? I would nominate two straight away. That's Sheringham and probably Clive Wilson because he was the man who used to take them at Queen's Park Rangers. Fox, they might not even need penalties. No flag here, Rosenthal! It's in! Oh, off the line! Well, I think it was Stuart Pearce who got back. But here was Rosenthal. He did everything right. Oh, that was brilliant from Pierce. Well, we may have said that he might not be 100% fit. I don't think he is. But he's uh, produced a superb off-the-line clearance there to deny Ronnie Rosenthal. Little flick on. Sheringham's in here. Oh, it's in the post. Across the face of the goal. It's a corner. Stuart Pearce, I think, again. Well, Sheringham, Rosenthal, Slade, came off the post. Oh, it was Pearce again. Well, we're into stoppage time. The stage is set for maybe Gary Mabbott to come up for this corner. The last moments, Sheringham, Slade wide, and that's the end of it, it's penalties. So, nerves now, a plenty, a penalty shootout between Tottenham and Nottingham Forest. It's Pierce against Walker, this is the first penalty. And 1-0 to Nottingham Forest. Advantage to Nottingham Forest. Brian Roy. Used to take them at Ajax. For Foggia. For Holland as well. Roy, very confident. Oh, it's saved by Walker! It's still 1-0 to Forrest as Ronnie Rosenthal comes up. Rosenthal. Whoa. Oh, he scored. 2-0 Nottingham Forest. Two penalty kicks down. Fox, he's got a score here. He scored. So it's 2-1. It's Chettle against Walker. A massive moment. Chettle scores. Forrest are nearly there. Sleep. The Forest, the Forest cup ties um, were excellent cup ties. Um, felt uh, both home and away we, we could have won the game. I mean, Ian Wan seems to bring something special out of his vocabulary there in terms of free kicks. Um, Certainly the second goal up there was a, was a wonder goal. Um, 
very unfortunate not to have won it down here um, in the last, in the, in, in the extra extra time. Um, penalties, well, I've advocated for many years, not just for that. I mean, I think I've gone for about six or seven penalty shootouts in my manager career, and that's the first one I've lost. Um, but even when I won the others, I don't think it's the right way to, to do it personally. Um, there's lots of fours and against for other ways, but certainly I don't feel the penalty shootouts are the way. I watched the 1990 World Cup finals and I thought virtually every game was decided on penalties and it's just it's just come away with, with no real feeling. I mean, you come in the dressing room afterwards, we haven't really lost. You know, we haven't lost over 90 minutes and extra time. We haven't won, we haven't lost, but you've, you've lost on penalties. It's, it's very, very difficult. Having said that, Whoever progressed from that ground, would, would, I don't think would have gone past the next one, which was two days later. And I felt sorry for Frank Clark because we'd had some, some great cup ties there, at their ground and at our ground, two, two very evenly matched sides. And then in the space of two days, I had to go and play for the Plaston Villa next round. I thought it was very unfair. And uh, watched the game, and they got very tired, Forrest. And uh, I certainly feel the same thing would have happened to us. And, uh, and after that game, as you, if you recall, we had a, a number of injury problems as well. So, unfortunately, if you're going well in certain situations and, and you have bad weather or games are postponed for whatever reason, um, you, you get punished, really, because you, the fixtures pile up and then, then you're going into one game after the other. And also, if you have injury problems, that's, that's the problem of, of when you need a big squad. Walker with the clearance. Graham Fenton. And Shearer's onside, might hit this one first time. Shearer dives and the penalty has been given. Well, I've got to say that that was a pretty poor decision from Paul Durkin, given to him by the linesman. Shearer against Walker. One nil Blackburn and it's another penalty. Ian Walker must be sick of those. Little flick on to Shearer. Now Alan Shearer's got the pace here. Has he got the finish the second time? He has a brilliant goal. He doesn't miss from that opportunity. Shearer is deadly on the one-on-ones and Blackburn go two in front with 11 minutes to the break. Well, Alan Shearer was given the incentive, but even so, that was a great finish. So Blackburn two up. So Fox... Floats it in, now there's a chance and a goal for Teddy Sheringham. Spurs are back in the match and it's Teddy, almost inevitably, who gets the goal. Well, now we've got a contest. Fox with the corner. And Flowers will be disappointed that nobody picked out Sheringham. Henry was on the line, but that's a great goal for Teddy Sheringham. Wilson. And again, Wilson. Armstrong! Brilliant! Take that one! Chris Armstrong levels things up at two apiece with a brilliant finish. Well, that was a fantastic goal from Chris Armstrong. As the ball came in, chest, volley, 2-2. Only man that stood out like a beacon in a Blackburn Rovers side that have robbed Spurs with a victory in injury time totally against the odds in the second half performance. David Howes put us ahead after 17 minutes. A 
two with Foxy and a forceful run and a shot which gave him his fourth of the season. Nine minutes into the second half and Rolf Fox got his fourth since joining Spurs. Scott Sellers added a second with six minutes left. It started on the Spurs right, Sasha Sercic supplying the cross and Walker no chance. Austin, in the Spurs game, sharing him available as the target again, Fox. Armstrong trying to get down that right channel. Bruce has let it run and Armstrong's in. And Peter Schmeichel was the saviour then. Well, Steve Schme Bruce in particular. Schmeichel won the main game. He won the battle. I think he should score here, Armstrong. I think he should just slot it past him. The great Dane. And I tell you what, that's great goalkeeping. He gambled that it was going to try and go over his head. And he got it absolutely right. But Steve Bruce will be pretty pleased that his goalkeeper did get it right. That would have been a bread and butter clearance for him. He opted to let it go, and he almost paid dearly. And now Diggs. Still Diggs. And Cole is in! And the catalogue of missed chances continues, and the manager, who kept faith with the striker today, shows his disappointment. Wonderful skill. Just a skill and the vision of Ryan Giggs deserved the goal. And that's a glorious opportunity. As chances go, and you're a striker in the Premiership, you really should be doing better. Good pressing by Mabbott. Injury and all. Cantona. Eric Cantona at a critical time again. Ah, you wouldn't get any money on anyone else in the ground scoring the opening goal. And it's a smash and finish, and not his strongest side. But he hits it cleanly, and he hits it accurately. Once he starts to drive at them, whether Gary Mavis injury has contributed here, Gibbs Walker no chance. But I tell you, they're absolutely furious Tottenham. Because, because it came from a goal kick that should have, should been, have a been a corner. Should have been a corner about two seconds earlier. They should have been defending a corner. The decision went Manchester United's way. And they're absolutely furious at Tottenham. McClare. Another offside decision. More drama for you live on Sky Sports. And... Uh, Oh, they're Steady furious. Sharing them. Sorry, Martin, they're furious because they feel that the free kick was taken. Whether it was or not, I'm not sure. But they feel Gary Neville took the free kick. Steve ball. Bruce was too busy, too busy chatting to Peter Schmeichel and one of the other players. Sheringham reacted so quickly, was away. The referee brought them back. He played the ball, was the cry from Jerry Francis. 
Here it is here now. As the ball comes in, Steve Bruce just turns away to the goalkeeper. There is a stop there, and there's a ball pass. Now look at Sherry and react, and Steve Bruce has just turned round. Nethercock. Sharing up. It's dipping. Well, there's Cantona at one end and Schmeichel at the other. And that's why they're such a formidable side. This might always have been clear in the crossbar. Not sure if it was dipping in, but Schmeichel doesn't know that. And he's got to go and make sure. Sheringham is in his expected position. And he pulls away a little bit deeper. And the ball goes where Sheringham was for Keane. Good challenge by Giggs on Austin's header. Cox. Spurs fighting to the last. Cantona. McClure. It's Beckham and he's onside. And Giggs! Oh, he smacked it against the bar. Beckham seemed to have presented the goal to Giggs. Nethercott, sharing him, out comes Schmeichel. Antona, yet again, struck the winning goal. Only Tottenham's third away defeat. They couldn't spoil United's day, although they certainly tried hard enough. It's Whelan now. Campbell out there with him. Played in for Richardson. Dublin's at the far post. And here is Dublin now! It's there! Oh, it was a super finish by Dion Dublin. And what a pass too from Kevin Richardson to find him. Fox with the corner. The header was from Howes and hooked it. No! Armstrong! Sheringham scored! Well, for a moment there, I thought Coventry had survived, but it wasn't to be. Teddy Sheringham with the equalising goal. Well, the corner from Fox was met firmly there by Howes. It took a deflection, I think, of Nethercott. Armstrong shot, somehow kept out. But there was Sheringham to guide his header back into the corner of the net. Such defiance from Coventry, but in the end, it went unrewarded. Sheringham making a little run in the middle. This is Rule Fox. Drive it through! And into the corner. Two goals in a minute. Have swung this game on its head. It was a chilling finish then by Rule Fox. Sentence pass. Off goes Armstrong. Sheringham's in the centre. And also arriving is Fox. Two for Fox, three for Tottenham. It was such a cohesive move then, strung together by Tottenham. And finished off in style by Rule Fox. Five minutes before the break, Stuart Pearce embarked on one of his characteristic raids down the left flank. And his deflected shot was bundled over the line by the perfectly positioned Steve Stone. Not even the presence of David Howes and Rule Fox could prevent the Forest midfielder from hooking the ball in. Stone, who's short a figure in England's European Championship campaign, continues to pop up with vital goals for his club. With Ian Walker having committed himself at the near post, it was Stone who reacted first to the loose ball. Forest went from strength to strength after the restart, and it was no surprise when they doubled their lead Ian Wone put them two in front after 62 minutes. Their opponents were caught out by the sheer speed of the counter-attack. 
Paul McGregor and Kevin Campbell were both involved in the build-up. And with the visitors' defence stretched to breaking points, Campbell picked out Ian Wone, and Spurs were looking at a two-goal deficit. Spurs had their moments, and Armstrong atoned for his earlier miss with a headed reply to give them some hope. His partnership with Teddy Sheringham has been one of the plus points of their season, and the two were at it again as they linked up effectively to cut Forest lead. Fox's corner. Near post. Good touch from Campbell. Spurs <laughs> His 101st league goal, and it could not have come at a better time. His 20th of this season for the Tottenham Hotspur. Janinho, men in the box here for Barrett, the youngster Somerville. Now, was it off the line by Clive Wilson? Off the bar, what an incredible series of let-offs. It's gone in now, and Mills for a level. And it's Phil Whelan who got it after an extraordinary series of let-offs for Spurs. Already being chanted by the Spurs faithful as Jason Dazelle goes off to make way for the return of a player who England hope is returning at just the right time for them ahead of Euro 96. Finally glanced header away by Nethercott to Anderton. Sheringham's made a great break. Anderton can't quite pick him out though. Gonna get in the way. I was actually thought I'd be playing at Bristol in the reserves that night, but Jerry, you know, phoned me on Sunday and said that he was thinking about putting me on the bench. So it's very nice. And where's your next game going to be? There's three first team games left this season. Um, I'm not sure really. Uh, of course, I'd like to play in all three of them, and that's what I'll be aiming to do. Uh, we'll have to see what happens, but you know, that's what I'm hoping to do. Chelsea, plenty of space here. Craig Burley. Little more floating inside, and Chelsea take the lead. And it's the scourge of White Hart Lane. Mark Hughes who gets the goal. Once again, Hughes scores on a ground where he had such a great record. And the game threatened a goal, and it's produced one after 34 minutes. Sheringham gets up, chance here for Armstrong, it's in, Chris Armstrong gets the equaliser and Spurs get a lifeline with 18 minutes to go. I've been here for 14 years, I never wanted to leave the club and that's still the case now and uh, fortunately I can stay for another two years. I don't know, you said when you sort of uh, completed the deal really, you're looking ahead for the next two years and obviously you want to win major honours again. Yes, my main ambition still remains to win the championship and in all those 14 years at the club, unfortunately, we never once really come close and uh, I think now under Jerry Francis, the last couple of seasons building up towards it, I feel that we can put a squad together now with perhaps a few uh, additions during the summer, I think we can put in a serious challenge next season and uh, that's my main ambition still. Exactly what Leeds United were looking for, but Tottenham Hotspur were not looking for. Fox's corner. And Spurs are level. It didn't take them long. Chris Armstrong's the man who's poached his 22nd goal of the season. Now then. Anderton all alone. And he makes Leeds pay. That's what Spurs have missed all season. The awareness and finishing class of Darren Anderton. Anderton. 
danger threatens every time Darren Anderson gets on the ball tonight, you feel. This is Sheringham. Here's Anderton. Magnificent finish. That is top quality. Darren Anderton's performance here tonight has been absolutely top draw. Dare I say, international class. I think the Leeds game, uh, Ellen Road, showed to me in particular, you know, what we've been missing and, and, and you know, you can never work it out, but, but certainly I felt if Darren had played for that seven months, you could have added another ten points to our total, I think. Uh, and that's not being unrealistic, I think, which, which would have put us on, what, 71 points and would certainly have got us in Europe and run us very, very close to the other three. Um, but that's life, that's the way it is. But certainly that game in particular showed our, his ability not only to create goals but to score goals. And um, it could have been more. It was an excellent performance at Leeds. Um, it was very hard for, for Darren to have to play Saturday, Thursday and then Sunday after being out for seven months, but we certainly wanted him to do that. So then we went to Newcastle, with obviously Newcastle having to win, us having to win really uh, for European players, all the other things going on around the country, relegation, promotion, European spots. So it was an exciting time. And um, again, I thought we did very well. I mean, we're only the second team, second team all season. There's only Manchester United that's won there and us got a draw there. Magnificent uh, home record for Newcastle shows, you know, that anybody. Three waiting in the box, Lee going in to join them as well. It's Ferdinand, back for Lee, didn't sit up for him, Mike for Batty! Magnificent save from Walker from Batty's shot. That was superb play all round. Sunder did initially well, Ferdinand holds it up. Little ball from Robert Lee to Batty, knew he had to hit it quickly. And what a save from Walker. Superb reflect action. It's Darren Anderton's cross, aimed towards Chris Armstrong. Fox's flick on, this is Jason Dazelle. Great chance for Dazelle, and it's 1-0 to Tottenham. Despair for Kevin Keegan. Jason Dazelle puts his team a goal, his third goal of the season. Well, that's absolutely brilliant. Song keeps it in the danger area. Completely turns Peacock. And look at that for a cool finish. Don't always need power. Looks up, curls it with his right foot. Watson all of it. And at one stage there, I think when Jason Dazelle scored and the results were going that we were in Europe at that time, but it wasn't to be and, um, you know, at the end of it, looking back, um, I still felt we could have made it. I felt a lot of things contrived to go against us this year, from the summer onwards with the injury situations. I thought that overall they'd done very, very well to hang on in there right to the last game of the season, finishing just, what, two points short of the European place. Um, I mean, we're, we're joint six really, I mean, it's all goal difference, we're all on 61 points. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll have a little bit more luck next year in terms of giving to uh, keep our squad together, to be able to play a full squad and also hopefully add into it this summer. Certainly be here next year, I mean, I've, uh, I've been very happy here, very happy. Um, I think um, the supporters have been, have been very good to me, um, I've enjoyed uh, a rapport. It's a great club and I think you know it, the one thing that's missing is, is we, we've got a bit of success and for me you know it's the league championship for me I think it's the ultimate.